After from some further analysis, I find out why the motor was smoking. Uh, at least all of a sudden I was cutting half a millimeter deeper than I was supposed to, uh, which is why there's a few character marks. Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Yet another part in the never-ending saga of my CNC. This little motor here, that's the DC motor that came stock with my milling machine, well, it died. So it's time to replace it and upgrade it. Uh, I want to give a big thanks again PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They make super high quality PCBs for a very affordable price. If you want to do some prototyping, you can just get a simple PCB made from them for just $5, delivered to you very quickly, and you'll save time and money by not breadboarding and doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff where in the end you'll have loose contacts and chasing a bunch of errors that you did, uh, where it would have just cost you $5 uh, to get some proper PCBs made. And in case you need anything CNC machined, they also have manufacturing services uh, that you can check out at the link below. So, a little while ago I started having some issues with my motor and long story short, uh, I'm not exactly sure what caused it to fail, uh, but it's not that big of a deal though, since uh, I've almost been kind of waiting to have an excuse to upgrade the spindle on this machine. After from some further analysis, I found out why the motor was smoking and that it's, it, it was drawing a lot more power than it was supposed to. Like I put it uh, again at like 2000 RPM and uh, took a look at like my power meter in there and it was pulling over 1300 watts, which is quite a bit more than the 1100 that it is weighted for and that is with no load. With the stock motor, uh, I can get around 2200 RPM on the spindle, which is Great for a manual milling machine, but for a CNC that really is very low. And while I'm not putting a 20k uh, spindle on there, that's just not the point of uh, this machine, uh, I am gonna upgrade a bit. And here you can already see uh, I'm moving into an AC servo, which uh, is gonna give me much, much more control. That was the other issue about this motor. I was never uh, did integrate the uh, feedback from the encoder back into Mach 4, so I would just kind of set it to a certain RPM, but have no way of knowing if it's actually there. With this servo motor, that's not going to be an issue anymore at all. I can set it to uh, 2791 RPMs and it's going to go to exactly that speed down to that 1 RPM. So what do I have here? This is a 1.5 kilowatt AC servo motor uh, from China. Uh, it's basically the cheapest uh, model I could find uh, since I don't really need anything super fancy, uh, but still uh, should be plenty strong. Uh, it has a bit more uh, power than this uh, spindle, which uh, will hopefully allow me to get about the same kind of power output uh, while increasing the spindle speed a bit. At the same time, I'm also uh, going ahead and ditching the gears uh, that are in the head since they are very noisy and I can't really drive those gears much uh, past their rated speed. So I'm moving to a uh, belt drive which is then gonna allow me to uh, have one pulley on here and the other pulley directly on the drive shaft of the spindle and uh, the way I configured it now is that I have a slight speed increase. This uh, servo motor uh, goes to a maximum of 3000 rpm and the way I have ordered the pulleys is that my maximum spindle speed will be around 4000 RPM.
All right, I would like to introduce my high precision motor mount made from tree carcasses. It's nothing great, uh, but it should definitely get me by until I can uh, mill the actual motor mount. Uh, just some simple wood strips to g give a distance and some pressed tree carcass fibers, uh, also known as MDF uh, on top, that uh, co connects the motor itself uh, to the base. And uh, the pulley is uh, actually reasonably tensioned, uh, at least at the moment. And this should allow me to uh, get the servo up and running and uh, cut the proper pieces since it does look kind of ridiculous. And I'm sure any machinists among you are uh, crying right now. If you're trying to do, do this modification yourself, uh, have fun with the shaft of the additional gears uh, here in the back. Uh, I was just trying to remove it real quick uh, to uh, get all the clearance I need and uh, three hours later I was still swearing. And uh, the problem is there's a snap ring on top and a snap ring on the bottom. The snap ring on top, even without proper tools, is relatively easy to remove. But it's not even that important uh, because the one on the bottom is a pain. It's like almost 10 centimeters up into the casting and uh, quite tough. Uh, and don't have the proper tools, but even if you have the proper tool, you, they need to be really long and skinny for you to actually be able to reach up in there. I ended up using a Dremel to kind of cut it into pieces and pry it out somehow, because it was also stuck. Even after I've cut it in half, it did not want to come out at all. But after some struggles, I was able to get those out and then uh, use a hammer to uh, smack the living crap out of uh, that bar uh, for it to finally drop out the bottom. After that, I was easily able to take all the internal uh, guts out of uh, the gearbox in here. Uh, there's basically nothing in here anymore now, uh, just the gears that are attached to the spindle itself. Uh, but I mean, those are attached and don't really matter but like the high-low gear selector switch is gone and uh, everything else in there as well. The quill still works uh, as usual uh, due to the way I put the pulley that uh, does not change any of that and I actually quite like that. Now it's time to get the electronics properly hooked up and this thing tested.
Alrighty guys, so here we are. As you were able to see, I configured the spindle correctly and it is working. The wooden motor mounts, they worked out quite well. Uh, they worked well enough uh, to keep the motor in place and uh, have my spindle uh, turning uh, while I'm machining the actual mounts from aluminum. And these were actually the first real parts uh, that I cut in this machine from aluminum. Uh, so there was quite a bit of a uh, learning curve involved and they're definitely far from perfect. Uh, but considering how little experience I have, I'm quite happy with them. What I did notice though uh, is that, well in the beginning everything was fairly tight and uh, there was, uh, like, I was actually getting what I was asking for. Uh, towards the end uh, I started to have a bit, lot more slop in the machine. Uh, uh, there was, again, once again, a bit too much backlash in the z-axis, so I'm not quite sure what is loose, so I'll have to investigate that further. I also had some sort of slippage in the z-axis, uh, either the tool slipping out or something else. I don't think it was the tool, but I'm not sure what it was. Uh, at least all of a sudden I was cutting half a millimeter deeper than I was supposed to, uh, which is why there's a few character marks, but uh, these are nicely hidden now uh, underneath the spindle. But speaking of the spindle, I am super happy with this servo motor. Uh, Great upgrade for sure. It's a lot faster uh, than the previous motor. It's more reliable. I just tell it the speed and it instantly goes there and stays at that speed, at that exact speed. No matter if it's engaged in the cutting or not, it just stays at that speed. So let me give you a very uh, quick demo here. I'm uh, gonna start off at a thousand RPM. Also, can you hear that? Like, I'm just normally talking to you guys and that still works. It's not super, super loud. So let's go up to 2000 RPM. That used to be about the limit of what I was able to do with this machine. And now 3000 RPM. I think this uh, showed off quite well how the motor is super responsive and accelerates and decelerates very fast. I'm also happy to report that 3000 RPM is no problem at all anymore now. Uh, the spindle is super solid and I could go up the way, all the way up to 4000 RPM theoretically, uh, but I'm pretty sure I'm only uh, able to go there for very short uh, amounts of time because even at 3000 RPM uh, after like 10-15 minutes uh, of cutting, uh, the spindle did get quite warm, so the bearings of course aren't meant for anything faster than the stock spindle can do, which was only about uh, 2400 RPM in theory, so uh, going 3000 RPM is already above the uh, specified working speed, so I'm sure I can go uh, 4000 RPM for a little while, but probably not more than like 10 minutes at a time uh, without replacing the bearings. But that might be something that I'll do in the future, but uh, not for now. And the main reason for that is, if you stay subscribed, there might be certain other CNC parts behind this camera right now that uh, kind of make a super high speed uh, spindle on this machine and not as important anymore. But make sure you subscribe for that. And with that, let's have a quick look at the electronics. So here we are. Uh, most of this should look quite familiar to you if you've seen my previous CNC videos. The only new thing is up here, the servo drive. And uh, it is uh, wired through the bottom, of course. And uh, then on this side has uh, power in. It's directly connected up to 220 volts. Uh, so no need for any power supplies with it. And on the bottom, it's connected to the motor itself. And then this here, this big wire, is the sensor wire for coming from the encoder on the motor. And up here, all of these connections are to interface with it. The way I have uh, configured it right now, I'm just uh, using it like a standard uh, stepper driver with step and direction signals. But there's also a bunch of other control uh, modes available uh, that you could choose from. What it has in addition though is a bunch of uh, sensor outputs, like you can uh, get the direct encoder signal, you can get uh, all the error messages that it might have, and you can also directly uh, remotely clear those messages and a bunch of stuff like that. And this little uh, four buttons up there is how you configure this drive. It comes with 
this little uh, manual here that is a few hundred pages in just English. And this manual is your new Bible when you get a motor like that. Without it, you're completely lost, as there are over 200 different parameters in there that you can configure uh, to change just about anything. No matter what you would want, uh, you can change it. Like, you want oh, the logic inverted, oh sure, uh, go ahead. You want to uh, have a different detection of the pulses it sends, go ahead. You want different uh, numbers of pulses uh, resulting in a revolution, you can configure all of that. To just get it up and running, there's not a lot to, you need to have configured. If you hook up the enable pin, then uh, it should work more or less directly out of the box. Otherwise, you will do, need to uh, set the setting that it's always enabled when it's powered on. But since I want to be able to turn uh, my spindle uh, by hand, if it's not turning automatically, I definitely want to have the enable hooked up and only enable that uh, when I'm actually using the spindle motor and uh, disable the drive otherwise. Because uh, while it's enabled, it will try to hold its position. Then the other thing is that by default, there's like 40,000 steps per revolution, which is a bit too many pulses. Uh, if you want to uh, go at a few thousand RPM, that's just a very high frequency signal. So I uh, set an electronic gear ratio to kind of reduce that a bit. It took me a bunch of uh, math and back and forth to try and figure it out. But in the end, I got it configured properly doesn't help that I also have an actual uh, gear ratio with my pulleys. So the RPM that is showing up here, like right now it's zero. If I turn it on. Right now it says uh, 1400 RPM, if you can read that. That's the RPM of the motor though. And my spindle RPM is uh, 2000 RPM right now. I don't actually want to go into too much more detail though. Uh, of how to configure it directly as uh, I only just barely was able to configure it myself. Maybe I'll uh, play around with it some more and hook up all the different other signals and if I figure it out and you guys are interested, uh, I can do a dedicated video just about uh, how to configure the servo drive. But with that, I think we can finish off by putting the covers over the electronics again.